In this video, I'm going to introduce binding theory as well as some definitions related to binding theory. Binding principles A, B, and C will be in the next video. So if you're looking for information about the binding principles, check the next video in the series. What is binding theory? Well, the overall notion of binding theory is a story of pronoun resolution, which means these words like himself and him, where do they get their reference? What do they refer to? So here's some sentences. John loves himself, and I have some indexes here. So John is I, and then I have I and star J. This means that himself has to refer to John and cannot refer to someone else. If John loves himself, and this himself refers to somebody else, then this is an ungrammatical string. So John loves himself has to mean that John loves John. What about the sentence, John loves him? If I say John loves him, if him refers back to John, then this sentence is ungrammatical. So we can't say John loves him to mean John loves John. We have to have this him referring to somebody else. So John loves him could be John loves Mark, and that would be okay. So binding theory lets us explain the principles syntactically of what constitutes a grammatical sentence and what constitutes a ungrammatical sentence in terms of these pronouns and reflexive pronouns. So let's dig into the terminology a little bit. R expressions are the first thing, and R expressions stand for referring expressions. So it's kind of self-explanatory. It's a weird word to use, but essentially it means that some noun phrase gets its meaning by some entity in the real world. So for instance, John is an R expression because John in the real world points to some guy. Bottle of water is an R expression because it points in the real world to some bottle of water that looks like a flask of alcohol, but I assure you that is a bottle of water. Ziploc bag refers to, of course, this lovely bag that stores stuff and says Ziploc on the front. Again, my drawing is terrible, but the point is R expressions refer to actual things in the world. Let's contrast this with anaphors. And anaphors are noun phrases that obligatorily get meaning from another NP in the sentence. So himself doesn't actually refer to anything in the world. Instead, it refers to something previously in the sentence, something like, say, maybe John, like John loves himself, where himself only gets its meaning because there is another noun phrase in the sentence. Similarly, themself or themselves, because themselves isn't a typical English word. We can't just say themselves in a sentence and everybody knows who's, who it's referring to. We need some other NPs in there in order to give themselves meaning. Same with each other. Like we have to say something like the boys hit each other. We can't just say each other was sad because we don't know what that each other is. So those are anaphors. And these are really split into two categories. I'm going to treat them as the same. Um, but typically, another word I might use in this case are reflexives. And typically, I'll only refer to words like himself and themselves as reflexives, because those are reflexives. Those are anaphors. The last ones are pronouns. And pronouns are special because they may get their meaning from another NP in the sentence, but they may not. And these are words like he, they, their. We, we generally know pronouns. I, me, you, him, she, her so on and so forth. So what do I mean by they may get its meaning from another NP in the sentence? Well, I could say something like, they love John, where I haven't referred to what they is in the sentence. It just is someone else somewhere. But I could say something like, the boys said that they died. And in this case, although it's semantically weird, it could be that the fact that the boys said that they themselves died. So the boys said that the boys died. Of course, they can't actually do that because they're dead, but it could refer to themselves. Or it could refer to somebody else. Like the boys said they, who may be, I don't know, some hockey team somewhere, died. So this is the difference between our expressions, anaphors, and 
pronouns. There's some other terms we need to know. One is the antecedent, so this is the NP that gives meaning to another NP, and then the word co-indexed. And we say that two NPs are co-indexed if they had the same index. So here's a sentence, James hit himself for hurting her. For the term co-indexed, James and himself are co-indexed because they both have the subscript I. And James is the antecedent of himself because James gives meaning to the word himself. So James is the antecedent for himself. Her is not co-indexed with anything, and her does not have an antecedent in the sentence. So her just refers to someone else in the discourse, and we don't know who. Okay, so those are some more terms. Finally, this is binding theory, so we should probably mention what binding means. Well, A binds B if A and B are co-indexed, and A C commands B. So you might have forgotten what C command is, but these are two important points. First, A and B have to be co-indexed, and two, A, C commands B. So I'll demonstrate C command in the following example. So here we have a sentence, John hurt himself. And the question is, does John bind himself? Well, first of all, we got to note, this is a grammatical sentence. So John hurt himself is fine. So here's the question. One, are they co-indexed? So John and himself have to be co-indexed. And we see that, yes, so John is subscripted with I, himself is subscripted with I, therefore they refer to the same thing, so they are co-indexed. So now one of our two conditions have been satisfied. The second one, does John C command himself? So what is C command again? Well, we say that John C commands himself if, and then we had some mathematical definition. But generally to see if C command you look at John, you look at the sister, and then you take everything below the sister. So this DP John C commands its sister and everything that is dominated by the sister. Which means that yes, John does C command himself because himself is dominated by the sister of John. Okay, this was back in the tree relations video. If you want to review C command again, you can go check that video out. It's in the last three minutes. And C command is an incredibly important notion for binding theory. So John, in this case, binds himself. And this is good. So we see that if John binds an anaphore, then a sentence is okay. Let's do another sentence. Heidi's mother hurt herself. And I have two different interpretations on the right here. The first interpretation, Heidi's mother hurt herself, where herself refers to Heidi, is bad. However, the sentence Heidi's mother hurt herself, where herself refers to Heidi's mother, is okay. So let's go through this. Let's ask ourselves some questions. I have two sentences or two possible interpretations where herself is co-indexed with just Heidi, and herself is co-indexed with Heidi's mother. So does Heidi co-index with herself? Yes. Does Heidi's mother co-index with herself? Yes. So they both are co-indexed. So we don't need to worry about co-indexation here. But let's talk about C command. So let's do the first, uh, the second sentence, Heidi's mother hurt herself, where Heidi's mother is J and her, herself refers to J. Does all of Heidi's mother, this DP, C command herself. Well, we take a look at the sister and everything below it. So the answer is, well, in the second sentence, yes, Heidi's mother, the DP, C commands herself. So it's okay. Now let's look at the first sentence for the first interpretation. Heidi's mother hurt herself where Heidi matches with herself or is co-indexed with herself. Let's check to see if Heidi C commands herself. So we take a look at the DP for Heidi, then we take a look at the sister and everything below it. In this case, there is no C commanding. So 
Heidi does not see command herself. And because Heidi does not see command herself in this case, the sentence is ungrammatical. So we can see with these anaphores, in order for an anaphore to be grammatically acceptable, its antecedent has to both see command and coindex. In other words, it has to be bound. In the first interpretation where Heidi and herself are co-indexed, Heidi does not bind herself because there is no C command relationship. However, if we just take a look at Heidi's mother, Heidi's mother does bind herself because Heidi's mother is co-indexed with herself and it C commands herself. So that is some terminology of binding theory in the next video, we'll talk about the binding principles A, B, and C, and the different conditions for these sentences to be grammatical or ungrammatical. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.